In this video, we're going to go ahead, and this is the third and final video I'll make on this, but it's, I just want to give you a taste of each, each one or each uh, particular situation. And we're talking about how to solve systems of equations through matrices. And most, uh, more specifically, how to use the TI-8384 family of calculators to do so. So, as I started in the last two videos, and if you haven't seen them, I would suggest going back. I'm going to, again, I'm going to, as I move through these videos, I leave out more and more steps. So, in this case, I need to translate this system into a matrix. A matrix is nothing more than an array having rows and columns. It will look almost identical to the system, except that I'm not going to put the variables in. But all of your variables have to be in the same column. You can't have x's, z's, and y's in one column. Only x's. But we can go ahead and pull off the coefficients and put them into the matrix. We have 2, negative 3, 1, 11, 3, 2, negative 2, 3, and negative 5, negative 12, 8, 10. If you had done the second part, you'll notice that this, la this matrix looks almost identical to what we just did. The only change is the bottom is equal to 10. Okay, this is going to give us something bad. And so I just want to, I, I, that's the only way I could guarantee that, hey, it's going to be bad. But what we're hoping for in the end is that when we spit this out, it's going to give us ones on the diagonal, zeros everywhere else in the where the uh, where the variables are, and then on the ends, this is going to be your answer called the augment. This will be x, this will be y, this will be z. Okay, so now we need to go ahead and put this matrix into our calculator. To do so, we'll go ahead and bring up our calculator and turn it on and now once we have it on and ready to go we hit second matrix which is your X inverse button and we scroll since we want to change it we scroll over to edit and find the one that we want and hit enter now we have to put the size of the matrix in it is the number of rows rows go across and so we have three equations three rows Now we have four is the next value, that's the number of columns. Since we have three equations, we have four columns. One for each of the variables, and then once for the uh, for the augment, which is the answer column. Once you've completed that, we're just going to go ahead and press enter, and now we're into the matrix. And we're just going to enter our numbers across the rows. As you press the enter key, it's going to advance across the row as it gets to the end. It will, the next enter press will go ahead and kick it back to the second row, or the next row down, and the first column in that row. It will repeat the process until you're at the very last column, very last row. Once you're there, you hit enter, it stays put. And so, if you have to overwrite any of these, for instance, you keep a matrix that's always 3 by 4, then you can go ahead and just overwrite them by pressing in whatever matrix and hitting enter. It will automatically overwrite whatever entry you have. So I'm going to hit 2, enter, and it overwrite, overwrites it. Negative 3, enter. 1, enter. 11, enter. 3, enter. 2, enter. Negative 2, enter. 3, enter. Negative 5, enter. Negative 12, enter. 8, enter, and 10, enter. Now watch the 13. I put in the 10, hit enter, overwrites it. So now that I've done that, I need to check to make sure I've written it correctly. So I'm going to check columns because I can see only three columns. So if I check my last column here, I get 11, 3, and 10. 11, 3, and 10. 1, negative 2, 8. 1, negative 2, 8. Negative 3, 2, negative 12. Negative 3, 2, negative 12. And then I have to scroll to the left in order to see my my first column here, and so that's 2, 3, negative 5. 2, 3, negative 5. Okay. So once I am satisfied that I put the matrix in correctly, go to second quit. If you start trying to do anything within that within that particular screen, uh, you're going to start messing up your matrix and get an error. When you hit second quit, it takes you back to the home screen, but we want to do some kind of a math to the matrix, and so we have to go to second matrix. All the matrix commands are hidden within this matrix menu. We want to do something to it calculator-wise, and so we go to math. And the thing, the command that we want is called row reduced echelon form, which is R R E F. It's option B. 
So we'll go ahead and hit enter on that. It'll take us back to the home screen and it'll put that command in here. Now what we have to do is we have to have an input. So we have to call the matrix that we want. To do that, hit second matrix. Again, all the matrices are kept right in the matrix command. Now we're not changing it. And since we're not changing it, we would just want to go ahead and call it. And so in the names column, you go ahead and select the matrix that you were working with. For mine, it's A, and I hit enter. That will input the matrix into that function. At this point, you can either close off the parentheses or you can leave them open. It doesn't matter. And so we're going to go ahead and hit enter to calculate it. Ooh, and we get decimals. Okay, well, that, you know, most people don't really care for really long decimals. So I suppose that you could just go ahead and say it's close to point three, negative 0.31 and negative 0.54. But I like mine to be a little bit more exact. And so if I can get fractions, I will. So if I hit the math key, It'll bring up a command. And then when I do that, you'll notice that first command is to frac. Hit enter. It'll change your answer into fraction form. Hit enter one more time. And then when you do that, it'll change whatever those decimals are into fractions as long as it can. If it can't, it's just going to leave them as decimals. And so you'll notice that in this matrix, we have a solution, or one that we think is a solution. Go ahead and write this down. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit, bring it back up. My first row is 1, 0, negative 4 thirteenths, and 0. So I need 1, 0, negative 4 thirteenths, and 0. My next row is 0, 1, negative 7 thirteenths, 0. 0, 1, negative 7 thirteenths, and 0. And my final row here, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1. And so if we interpret this just like I did before, we're going to have 1x on the top row plus 0y's minus 4 thirteenths z's is equal to 0. On the second row, we have 0x's plus 1y minus 7 thirteenths z equals 0. But on this last row we have 0x plus 0y plus 0z's equals 1. It's the last row again that we want to take a look at. The problem here is that we have effectively 0 times x is 0, 0 times y is 0, 0 times z is 0, and yet it still equals 1, so 0 equals 1. Well, that never happens, ever, 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 ever. And so since this can't happen, there is no solution. In other words, it doesn't intersect. These are going to be parallel. And so, uh, so what you can do is say that this is an inconsistent system. And that's how you interpret that solution. So in all three of these, you want to take a look at the answer matrix, and it will tell you whether there is A, a unique solution because you'll have ones in the diagonal and then you'll have answers over on the far column zero everywhere else or it could be dependent which means that you'll have try to have ones on the diagonal but one row will be all zeros that's a dependent uh, system or you can have an inconsistent system where one row is all zeros except for the final column and that'll be an inconsistent system and that's how you put matrices and use your, your TI-83 and 84 to input matrices and solve systems.